Welcome to the Old Time Radio Superman Show. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, send it to me, adam at adamsweb.us. Reminder to check out uh, dimnight.com, the homepage of Tales of the Dim Night. And for all those of you who've got ebook readers for Christmas, we have a, a nice after Christmas special running for the Kindle and iPad versions, as well as all other ebook versions of Tales of the Dim Night. $2.99 for Kindle copies, $3 for all others. I encourage you to check that out. Well, uh, we've got quite a mystery going on here. With Lois Lane at last showing up, we're going to find out what happened in A Mystery for Superman, Part 4. Presenting the transcription feature, Superman! Look! Up in the sky! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Yes, it's Superman! strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. Superman, who can leap tall buildings at a single bound, race a speeding bullet to its target, then steal in his bare hands, and who, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, fights a never-ending battle for truth and justice. But before we join Superman, listen... And now to our story. Superman, in the guise of Clark Kent, is now engaged in trying to solve what is probably the most baffling case of his entire career. Returning to Metropolis in answer to an urgent telegram from editor Perry White of the Daily Planet, Kent, Lois Lane, and Jimmy Olsen received another telegram on the train telling them to get off at the station before Metropolis. Only Lois was to continue on to the city. After getting off the train, Kent realized the telegram was a fake. And as Superman caught up again with the train to tell Lois about it. But Lois was missing. Later in Metropolis, she called on the telephone and asked Editor White to come to 407 South Street and bring $20,000 with him, saying she had uncovered a wonderful news story. Editor White left for the address carrying the $20,000 with him. Later, he too telephoned Kent and asked to have Darwin, the cashier, deliver another $20,000 to the same place. Kent, however, countermanded the order and went down to the address himself to see what these requests for money were all about. The place turned out to be a theatrical rooming house run by a Mrs. Walsh. Lois and White were not there at the time, and Mrs. Walsh did not know when they would be back. Accordingly, Kent returned to the Daily Planet, where, much to his surprise, he found Lois waiting for him. Listen. Where have you been? That's what I want to know. And what's this all about? Clark, I've told you I don't know what you're talking about. Now, look, Lois, let's get a few things straight. We were coming back from the Bar O Jude Ranch, remember? Well, of course I was. All wouldn't... right, and we got a telegram on the train telling us to get off at Walden Junction, the station just before Metropolis. Yes. Right? That's right. Jimmy and I were to get off, and you were to come on here. That's right. Now, and... wait a minute. Wait, let me, let me finish. After Jimmy and I got off, I discovered that the telegram was a fake. And I, uh, well, I, I got back on the train. Well, how could you have gotten back on the train? I waved goodbye to you from the window. Oh. The train must have left before you discovered the telegram was a fake. Well, I, I hired a car, a fast car. Oh, how could well, you? Well, never mind that. The important thing is, when I got back on the train, you were gone. Now, you had disappeared somewhere between Walden Junction and Metropolis. I had. You had. I wasn't on the train. No. I didn't get off at Metropolis Station. Well, of course you didn't. You couldn't have. Don't you remember what happened to you? Well, as far as I'm concerned, I did come into Metropolis on that train. I did get off at the Metropolis Station, and I did come straight on here to the office. But you couldn't have. Oh, all right, then. I didn't. Then what did you do? I don't know. You tell me. You seem to know what I did better than I do. Now, look here, Lois. This is no time to get sulky. Something strange going on here. Something even I can't understand. Oh, something you can't even understand. Well, you'll just have to try harder, Superman. What did you say? I said you'll just have to try harder, Superman. Lois, do you think that I am Superman? No. But apparently you think so at times. Now, now look, Lois, all kidding aside... 
What's been the meaning of all these telephone calls you and White have been making asking for $20,000, $40,000 and all? Paul, you're out of your mind. I'm beginning to think so. I haven't made any telephone calls asking for $20,000. And as far as I know, Mr. White hasn't either. Have you seen him? No, I haven't seen him. Well, this is certainly all beyond me. You're not on a train, yet you swear you were. That's right. You didn't get off the train to Metropolis, but you insist you did. You telephoned here several times, asking Editor White to bring $20,000 in cash because you need it to cinch a terrific news story. And you say you haven't been near a phone. There's something crazy about all this. There certainly is. You. All right, all right. You win. I'm out of my mind. I don't know what I'm doing. There's nothing new about that. I'm I'm going out for some air. I've got to clear my head and give myself a chance to think. I'll I'll see you later. Okay. It doesn't make sense, and it's got to. I, I've got to make it make sense. Oh, that office there is empty. I'll just step in there. Oh, Lois, I was going out for a little air. Well, I will. But I think I'll take my little constitutional as Superman. And I might just as well head in the direction of the theatrical boarding house on South Street. Open this window. Up! Up! And away! doesn't answer. Oh, here comes someone now. Yes? Uh, I'm Clark Kent of the Daily Planet. Yes? Is Mrs. Walsh at home? Who? Mrs. Walsh. Uh, the woman who runs this boarding house. Oh, oh, oh I see. You, you've got the wrong address, young fellow. So this is 407 South Street, isn't it? Yes, but it isn't a boarding house. Never has been. It's, well, it's just a private residence. Uh, look here, I... I don't mean to intrude, but there's something rather strange going on. Something I'm trying to investigate. May I come in and look around? Well, yes, I suppose so. Come right in. Thank you. What would your name be, sir? Dr. Hendricks. I'm a psychiatrist. Uh, retired, of course, and live here by myself. Uh, you sure you feel all right, young man? Yes, I feel all right. Except... Well, except... Yeah. Except for what? Well, this, this isn't the place at all. And yet it is. Now, well, that's impossible, young man. The thing is, or it is not. No, not in this case. I know I came to this house before. It was a theatrical boarding house then, run by a Mrs. Walsh. There were theatrical pictures on the walls, photographs and all that. The wallpaper was different. The furniture was different. In fact, everything was different. Hmm. Have you ever suffered from this sort of delusion before? No, I... Uh, just a minute, sir. I'm not suffering from any delusion. Well, of course you believe you weren't. It wouldn't be a delusion if you knew you had one. No, I... I suppose not. And yet... If you don't mind my saying so, I'm afraid you must be suffering from a case of false memory. False? You know, sometimes we see things and believe implicitly that we saw them before. We doctors know that as false memory. You didn't actually see the thing, and... I tell you, I was in this very house. I... Oh, what's the use? I'm sorry to trouble you, Doctor. Good day. Uh, just a moment. Yes? I don't feel I ought to let you go without making some attempt to help you. Uh, come into my office, and we'll, uh, we'll have a chat. You think I'm crazy, don't you? Oh, certainly not. Oh, yes, you do. I can tell in the way you look at me. None at all. You see, you see, you're imagining things again. Now, you just come into my office and we'll get this whole thing straightened out. Uh, when did this strange trouble first come over you? I'm sorry, but I haven't time to discuss it. Thanks again and goodbye. I assure you, young man, that with a few treatments... Yes, I know. ...get at the feet of your trouble. Am I going crazy? Am I really imagining all this? Dreaming it? I must be. Lois never got off the train, she says. And she didn't telephone. I go to a theatrical boarding house and interview a Mrs. Walsh. And then it develops that neither she nor the boarding house actually exists at all. But what's happened to me? Mine isn't any ordinary brain. I'm not given to delusions and... No. No, by heavens, I'm right. I'm not imagining all this. It did happen. And Lois must know something about it. 
It's back to the Daily Planet for me as Superman. Up! Up! And away! Bill, have you seen Miss Lane? Uh, no, Mr. Ken. She went out just a minute or two after you did. Said she'd be back in a little while. Okay, I'll wait in her office. Okay. She's playing some kind of trick on me. If this is a gag... I... Come on. So there you are. Now, look, Lois. I've thought this thing out. And I'm here to get a few matters settled with you. Talk, listen to me. No, you listen to me. Lois, as I say, I've thought the whole thing out. And there's only one conclusion I can come to. You were not on that train. Something did happen to you between Walden Junction and Metropolis. You never did come back to the office. Now, don't deny it, Lois. Deny it? Clark, are you out of your mind? No, I'm not. You're not going to make me believe I am. You were not on that train, Lois. Now, admit it. Of course I admit it. What? Why do you think I've come here? What? Why do you think I've been trying to escape from those people for days? And what? what? You... Of course I wasn't on the train. I was taken off it. Kidnapped. Oh, Lois, for heaven's sake. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What in the world is going on here? That's what I'm trying to tell you. After the train left Walden Junction, I went into my compartment. Yes. There was a man there. Before I could cry out, he put his hand over my mouth, and I smelled chloroform. I don't know how the train was made to stop or how they got me off it. But the next thing I remember, I was locked up in a room that I'd never seen before. You were... Yes. Oh. Lois, what... Well, what made you decide to tell me this? Why didn't you admit all this when you talked to me half an hour ago? Talked to you half an hour ago? Yes, that's right. Clark, what in the world are you saying? Why? Well, I haven't seen you for two days. Well, there's a surprise for us. What is the answer to this strange and baffling mystery? What is the answer to the telephone calls? For a thrilling conclusion, for the amazing solution to our story... Be sure to hear the very next episode with Superman. Don't forget, tune in again for the next thrilling episode with Superman. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine.